and welcome to this tutorial looking at uh, applying a Gaussian blur to an image so that you can create a false shallow depth of field. I know this is something you've covered in lessons but it's also something we've done using Photoshop. Now I'm going to show you how to do it in Photop so that you can carry on with your coursework. So what I'm going to do first of all, go to File and Open and I'm going to find my picture. I have an image on the desktop of some Lego characters that I took. Now, as we know, we create a shallow depth of field in three ways. The first way is changing the aperture on the camera. The second way is how close you are to the subject. So in this case, I'm quite close to the subject. And so I am starting to get a shallow depth of field as it goes back. I have out of focus, soft focus, and sharp focus. But as we know, we can use a Gaussian blur in an editing program such as Photop as well as Photoshop to enhance this effect even further. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So what we're going to do first of all is take our image and we're going to take it to the new layer icon so that we duplicate it into a second layer. I'm then going to go to filter and I'm going to go to blur and Gaussian blur. Now, when we apply the Gaussian blur, we can choose how much we want this effect to take place. And if you go too far, completely lose the image altogether. So it is a balancing act. And what we're looking to do, of course, is to push the image out of focus as it goes back. I think something like this will work well. Click OK when you're happy, or hit the Enter key. And then what I'm going to do is select the Eraser tool, and I'm going to knock the opacity right down. And I'm going to go onto the type of brush and I'm going to ensure that it's soft as opposed to hard. Then using my square bracket keys on my keyboard, I can change the size of my brush. And what I'm going to do is start to rub through. Now I've still got the mouse uh, button down because what I want to do is to get a consistent uh, rub through of the whole person in the first instance. And I'm going to do the same for the second. I'm going to move back to the second because I actually want them to start to come through soft as well. And I might even go to the third. So I just start to have a very soft rub through. Now, if I turn off the bottom layer, I'm sure you can appreciate what we're doing. We're rubbing through one layer so that we can see the layer that's underneath it. So effectively, we're making a hole in the top one so that we, we can start to see the image come through sharper. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to do the same again, but I'm not going to hit the third model, the third Lego toy. I'm going to do the second one, and I'm going to do the first one. And so this is going to start to bring these two into a sharper focus. So now we've got out of focus, we've got our soft focus, and we're starting to get a sharp focus. If I turn these off and just put the top layer on, you'll see that they're becoming more and more translucent. I'm now going to do one more, but I'm not going to do the second character. I'm only going to do the first character. And the idea being that this will start to bring this image very sharp. And I'm going to do lots of mouse clicks in the face because I want that to be the sharpest of focus. I would also do the hands possibly the chest area, that's the, the main body of the character. So once again, if we turn the bottom one off, you can see effectively I've, I've rubbed right the way through. And you could even maybe do it in this mode so that you can see which areas you've, you've missed. I'm happy with that because I know that then this is just going to show the sharpness of the layer underneath when I put this back on the top. And so I'm able to make this the key subject of the image. Now, of course, you can do this to almost any photograph. People can be good. Sometimes if you've got a distracting background, something like that, if you've got a photograph of someone in a street, you can remove the street effectively and really bring your attention to the subject, in that case, the person. There's lots you can do with this. Do think about using this in all of your creative cycles. And art students can use this as well, of course. Something great that you can play around with for your portfolio. Thanks for watching and I will be producing another one soon on um, 
how to create shadows. So keep your eyes peeled for that tutorial too. Thank you. Goodbye.